Hello everybody, this is Dana with the Freedom Please channel and EssenceOfMe.com. I'm coming to you all today with another installment of the Yarn Crafters Chat. In today's video, which I am titling Book Lover with Yarn, I'm going to share one of my first, at least I think it's one of my first, book reviews with you, which is for The Friday Night Knitting Club by Kate Jacobs. I love to read and so I'm going to tell you all about this book and I'm actually going to tell you about this book uh, not just from a sense of a crafter and about the book but how I actually got through the book and finished my projects at the same time. I'm also going to share with you my current project that I'm working on as well as one of my most recent completed projects which I'm so happy that it is done. Um, what else? I also have a reader's question which I will address, uh, which is about stitch counts. She is coming from the perspective of a crocheter, but I'm sure it can be applied to both my crocheters as well as my knitters. And I'm sure I will come up with some other things from the beginning to the end to discuss with you all today. So, if you have a project that you're working on, this would be a great time to hit pause and go grab your project. Don't forget to grab your tea or your coffee, and I will see you all on the other side of the introduction. And if you're not sticking around, I look forward to hopefully connecting with you again soon. For everybody else, let's get going, and let's get this video on a roll. See you on the other side. Okay, I'm back. This is Dana with the Freedom Police channel and EssenceOfMe.com. This is the Yarn Crafters Chat. I'm calling this Yarn Crafters Chat Book Lover with Yarn. Yes, a book lover with yarn. But before I get to that and tell you why I decided to do that, I'm going to go ahead and let you all know. You may see people moving around my house because I'm recording in the middle of the day. Here's your warning. Number <laughs> To. This may be extra long or extra short. I don't know. We won't know until we get to the end. So that's your second warning. And number three, I have so much to share. I kept telling you all the yarn crafter chat was coming. The yarn crafter chat was coming. And I was waiting for, waiting for the perfect opportunity, but you know how that is. No, no opportunity is perfect, unlike the one that you're in. So here we go. Before I get started, I'm going to show you what I am working on. So let me grab it. This is a project that I started. I actually frogged another project and wanted to use the yarn and now I'm doing this project and I have an idea in mind and I don't think I have enough yarn so I have to go get some more and hopefully they have the color. And here it is. I'm going to, uh oh, didn't want to lose it. Go back. Aren't the stripes beautiful? This, I'm not following a pattern or anything as usual. This is one of those projects that is fantastic for evening knitting. Something that I try my best, I try my best to do about a row or so a day. So it's taking me forever, but it's okay because it's mindless knitting. It is really pretty. Um, these, this is a self-striping yarn. I guess you would still call it that. And it's called Tweed Stripes by Lion Brand Yarn. The color is Mixed Berry. It's Mixed Berry. It's a bulky. I don't work a lot with, well, let me take that back. I work a lot with bulky in the fall, but not normally this time of the year. But I had this yarn. I wanted to get it. it to use it and do something with it. I'm also, as you all know, trying to work through my stash, which seems to be a good theme around on YouTube, but I am. I just am. So, here it is. It, I don't know what the length is right now. I just cast it on and went from there. So, um, what I have in mind, I'm excited about. And I'm knitting it, it with my Denise Interchangeable Needles, and I have fallen in love with these needles. Um, I, I'm, I really am going to talk again just about needles soon. 
Um, and you all let me know if you have any questions about them. But I have now accumulated a really nice um, set of needles um, using all, you know, all different types of materials. The only ones that I don't have at this time are the carbon, even though I've got my eyes on them because I've used them before and they were great. It's just I like the Addies more and I didn't want to incur the expense of getting both at the same time. So, and so I, I haven't gotten them yet. But that's what I'm working on. And have it in my cute little bag. I think I've showed this to you all before. Handmade by Dana. And now I'm going to show you what I recently finished. I could have this already. But that goes back to the whole perfect timing. Okay. Are you all ready for this? Now, I have not blocked it yet. And I don't even know if I am. No, I think I am. Look. It's done. Okay. It's hard to see this. First of all, it is asymmetrical. It looks like it's the same, but it's really not. And this goes really long. It's jagged on one side, smooth on the other. And it's also smooth on this side. So it's two smooth sides and a jagged side. This is the hitchhiker pattern that is um, in Ravery. 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 There we go. And I will try it on. I would probably wear it. Like this is the yarn that I received during my swap. Um, in this is why I want to block it because it's sort of short, even though it's actually fairly. So I'm gonna block it. Oh, there's something. One of my little. But there it is. It's really pretty. I'll take some pictures. You may see this again at the end of the month, but if you don't, you've seen it now. Why was this the never ending project? And um, before I get into the book review, I want to talk about that for just a second. Sometimes when we're working on projects, for me, I knit slow. And I find that um, you really have to know yourself as a knitter. Also, and this goes the same for crochet. You really have to know yourself and what your skill set is, but also knowing the appropriate tools to use can aid you with either making those adjustments where your skill set is. What do I mean by that? I mean that, for example, a project like this, even if an um, author had a particular gauge, because I knew I wasn't going to add any more yarn or take away any more yarn than was left with that one skein that I had because there was no way for me to purchase another skein of the yarn. It's a hand dyed yarn. I got it. Uh, she's in the UK. That was it. That one skein was it. Um, so I could have used, because um, I used a really small needle. I think it was a size, I think it was a US 4. 3.25 it was small and so I could have used a larger needle size which would have made um, this it would have adjusted the sizing but it would have meant that the stitches would not have been this fine in detail and I must say that I've never really been a big fan of garter stitch I don't know why I prefer stockinette stitch I like the smooth side the bumpy side being able to clearly tell between the right and the wrong side but for this maybe it's because the stitches are so fine I just I fell in love with garter stitch and I did not fall in love with this pattern even though I like the pattern here's why <laughs> again you gotta know your skill set after about doing probably about it was a eight row repeat that gradually does increases on almost every row if I'm not mistaken I would have to think about it but I'm almost certain and after that you know after doing that about two times I was able to memorize it so all I had to know was what row I was on at any given moment to pick it up and keep going which really meant this project went on and on and on because I could do it in the car I could do it um, 
while I was waiting for the kids to do something. I could do it while I was waiting at the bank, like all that kind of stuff. This was perfect for that. And I actually just um, had a little bag that I, um, I went somewhere and they had swag bags. They gave us this bag. It was perfect because I could fit the piece in with the yarn and everything folded up and it would fit in my purse just like this. And so it was perfect for that, but it just wasn't eventful. And about before halfway through it, I was already like done already. And then I started working more on it to rush it along and it still was going on forever. But what I can say, I'm proud of myself because when I was done, all I had was a few little stringlies of yarn in my hand. I used every bit of that yarn. Now, what did I use the last bit of yarn on? On this look. If you follow me on Instagram, I did post a picture of this. This is one of the items that I make. And I make it different every time. I don't use a pattern. I usually, I've been doing it when I have just a little bit of yarn left and I'm doing either a one skein project or a two skein project and I don't want any yarn left over and if the pattern allows I go up until I have just a little bit left and I can complete a row hopefully a repeat <laughs> and then I utilize the rest of the yarn for this this is what I put inside of my packaging um, whenever I give it as a gift or send it to somebody and they can just put a um, safety pin or something on it and use it as a pin. So, here it is. This is my little butterfly. And as you all know, I mean, my logo for Essence of Me is a butterfly. Um, my logo for Handmade by Dana, butterfly. I love butterfly. So, that's what this is. No pattern. Just thought it up. And ever since then, I loved seeing it inside of the packaging. And so, I just, I just let it rip. So, that is my project and I'm going to block it I just haven't done it yet um, mainly because of time and um, but I need to do it because I want to wear it and I don't want to wear it like that because it, it needs a little more body and if I do if I do wear it like that I may pair it with another one just to add a sense of layer to it because when I wear something like that I like chunkiness which is another reason for using larger needles Okay, so that is that. Okay, so now to the book. The Friday Night Knitting Club by Kate Jacobs. This book was given to me by my sister. I don't know why she bought the book, but she started reading it and stopped reading it because she thought it was about knitting, which in a way it is. I'm going to read the description. Once a week, an eclectic group of women comes together at a New York City yarn shop to work on their latest projects and share the stories of their lives. At the center of Walker and Daughter is the shop's owner, Georgia, who is overwhelmed with juggling the store and single-handedly raising her teenage daughter. Happy to escape the demands of her life, she looks forward to her Friday night knitting club, where she and her friends, Anita, Perry, Darwin, Lucy, and Casey exchange knitting tips, jokes, and their deepest secrets. But when the man who once broke George's heart suddenly shows up, demanding a role in their daughter's life, her world is shattered. Luckily, George's friends are there for encouragement, sharing their own tales of intimacy, heartbreak, and miracle making. And when the unthinkable happens, these women will discover that what they created isn't just a knitting club it's a sisterhood so here it is i could i started with the description for a reason because i have to go in the order that things pop in my head because i didn't write it out but number one i loved the book however i first started reading the book and i it didn't catch me enough to to encourage me to keep reading the book okay so what I did is I wanted to read it it kept sitting on my nightstand I kept seeing it and I kept trying to read it now I've never done a book review here but I've done a lot of book reviews that's kind of what I did for years and with that I always had a three chapter rule my three chapter rule is if you do not catch me by the third chapter I am done I am out and it's just not the book for me not against the writer 
not against the story. Well, sometimes it's the writer, sometimes it's the story. But in this case, it just didn't catch me enough yet. So my alternative, which is a tip for you all today, as well as a part of my review, is I went on to Overdrive, which is an app, and I am going to insert an image of the website here. You can look for it. I believe it's both in, um, I know it's in the iTunes or for Apple, but I'm almost certain it's for Android as well. I'm almost certain of that. And I looked the book up. What Overdrive is, is it's connected to most, uh, uh, well, quite a few public libraries. I don't want to say all, but it was connected to my area public library, and they had the book. And that is how I was able to knit that never-ending <laughs> Shaw and listen to slash read this book. I found that listening to it was so much better than reading it um, because, and later, once I was into the story, I understood why it took me a minute to get into the story. At the beginning of the story, it's all George's voice, George's voice, George's voice. And it's not bad. It just was kind of blah right then about I think it was either chapter three or chapter four in the reading of the book I don't know kind of where the chapters fall because the files are not broken up by chapters but by sections but and then it became a little more eclectic because it had almost all the characters voices being shared now on a downside when you listen to the audio is you can like or dislike the person reading the book and the person reading the book she did okay it wasn't excellent but I mean it was what it was it was great knitting and crocheting reading listening to it okay because the story is very straightforward um, every once in a while it would uh, Georgia would or they would insert little tips about projects and about yarn and just little like anecdotes that were knitted related or yarn related and every one of them that they said I thought it was worth the price of the book or worth my time just those little tidbits and little tips and so I liked that as for the story did I like Georgia's character I liked her character I liked her character more in the middle and towards the end than the beginning in the end um, I thought her daughter was great um, I loved the relationship between her and the women and Georgia was just a bootstrapper. She was one of those women in the book. She's just one of those women that, you know, you get lemons, you make lemonade. Life throws you a fast one, you duck, you recoup, you go on and that's the type of woman that Georgia is and she's also the glue. She's the glue between all of these women that come from so many different places. Um, one is um, a graduate student. One is a producer that is um, trying to find permanent employment, single, and really would like to have a family, but she's single. Um, another woman is um, what you may consider like an A-list or her husband has a really great career, but she feels lost in the shuffle of life and has lost part of herself in the identity of her husband and who her husband wants her to be. So she's taken on that persona and has lost herself in the process. Um, then she also has another friend that was her friend from um, her career times when she worked outside of Walker and Daughter, which is her yarn shop. And that relationship is carried forward. And then you have this collection of women that have all types of experience with knitting from very seasoned knitters to very new knitters and the frustration of starting to knit. And the, the, the heart of the story is not about knitting at all, but knitting is the glue. The yarn shop is the glue. Even them describing the yarn and the yarn shop, it just, I love to shop for yarn. It was exciting. <laughs> And so, um, I can't tell you the story because I will not do a spoiler alert, but I will tell you this. Do not read the second book before you read the first book. I just don't do it. I'm reading the second book right now. Just don't do it. Listen to your girl. You know I look out for you. Don't read the second book before reading the first book. Um, I highly suggest if you are already working on projects and you like to read or you haven't thought about reading, you have hours on your bottom as you knit or crochet, 
Look for OverDrive. It's free. It connects with your library card if your library service is attached to it. And go in and um, find the book and see if you can check it out. Um, you may have to place it on hold, but they notify you and tell you when it's available. And it will even tell you where you are in the line of waiting for the hold. And so, um, look, that's about OverDrive as well as the book. And so, um, with that all said, if I had to rate this book on a scale of 1 to 5, 5 being excellent, 1 being bleh. No, I won't say that. That's not very nice. Not good. Or I wouldn't read it again. That's what 1 would be. I wouldn't read it again. And I wouldn't recommend it either. <laughs> I would say this book is a 4. Probably a sh nearly a 4.5. Um, there were some things that I did not like about the ending, but I will not talk about that because that would give away too much in my opinion. And I do not like when people spoil the story for me. But in the end, I loved the characters of the book. I liked their interaction. I liked the sisterhood and the bond that uh, was formed between them. I also liked that there was women of all different um, generations in the book. You had like Anita that is more your... Um, a senior, I think I would say she's probably in her late 60s, early 70s ish. And then Georgia was probably, I think, maybe in her 30s, maybe mid 30s, late 30s, and everything in between down to, um, you know, to her daughter, which was 12 or 13, somewhere in there. And, um, and you, you see each woman each woman has their own story thread which is good and everyone is dealing with something different and you see how having that break to or them embracing crafting as a, a mode of either getting away or dealing or co coping with what they're going on what's going on in their lives and so in the end I would highly recommend this book um, I, no, I'm not going to say that. I was going to say I would even consider reading it again soon. I don't know because I liked listening to the audio, but I don't know because it took me so long. And maybe now that I know what's going to happen, it may be easier. I don't know. The other thing that I have to say about the audio, and it doesn't have something directly to do with the book, the woman's voice was okay. But there's two characters in the book that are African American, and it's just the voice to me just didn't go together. I know it's not that African Americans sound one way and non sound another way. It's just it just didn't click well. And even though it seemed like the writer had a really good ear for uh, dialogue and how to communicate dialogue between the women so that you would know, I don't know if I think the the narrator quite got it. She got it enough so that as you were listening, you knew the difference between each of the characters, which is all that counts. But I think it would have added a bit more richness to it and depth to the characters um, had that little element been there. So with that said, I didn't have to do anything to do with the writer. So here's the book. The Friday Night Knitting Club, and I'd like to know, have you read this book? And if you have, what did you think about the book? Um, based on this review that I've given you today, would you consider reading this book? And um, would you like to see more book reviews? I mean, you know, you could say no, but if I found <laughs> no, you know I'll listen to you. So with that said, tell me what you think about the book if you've read it, if you haven't, if you even consider reading it again, and if you'd like for me to do some more book reviews. Now, I'm pretty sure I'll do more in the future, but they won't all be about knitting. I just thought this would be a great one to kick it off with. So, that is the book. And now we will go to our reader question. I have to bring it up. I have to bring it up. The question was... Okay. Okay. I don't have the question. But I have what I answered. The question was somebody is working was working on a graphic pattern and you know when you are doing in crochet 
or even if knitting, well, it's harder to see in knitting, that when you lose the stitches, that your ends of your knitting tend to warp. If you lose a stitch, it, it, it curves in. If you gain a stitch, it curves out. And so it makes it so that if you were planning to have a perfect square or a rectangle or straight sides, that that would not, it wouldn't look that way. And so the question was, how can you fix that? How can you fix that? And, and that's what the reader, uh, she asked me. And so what I want to do is give a few tips. I don't have a lot because I wrote a really long message to her and that's what I have here, but I'm not going to read the entire message to you. But what I'm going to talk about is some things that you can do to help with that. First of all, whenever I am crocheting a project that is a big project, I use stitch markers. Now, and I don't use the fancy ones that I use with my knitting. I use bobby pins. But what I, or even um, yarn, but when I do that, I actually place them in so many stitches apart. So usually I will do them every 20 stitches. Um, something so that when I eyeball it, I can see from a distance where something has gone wrong. Or, and if I think that, I can quickly go to that section and count up the stitches and see that I have 20 stitches in that section. So that's the first tip that I would give you. If you have a mega project, you know, try to break it up in an increment that you can eyeball. You may want to do it in 50, but I wouldn't want to have to count 50 stitches in a section. So 20 is usually a good rule of thumb for me. Um, but if you can eyeball it, then that way you can identify where you are missing a stitch and then determine how to fix the problem. How do you fix the problem? Well, you could try to identify where you lost the stitch, but that would be you and that, that would not be me. I wouldn't do that. What I would do is in that same section, I would just do an increase. And then you will see that after a row or so, it was somewhat level off. Um, with the increase um, stitch, I would try my best to not do it on the end and do it within the body of the stitches is the way that I handle it because it's easier to go unnoticed then on the ends. Um, and then if you found that you lost them for over a period of time, don't try to bunch them all in one row. Gradually do it and just document until you get to the place where you have increased to the number of stitches that you need in order to make your project work. Um, another way to repair that is to use a border. So after you've done the stitch correction and you've made this, you, you have gained your stitches back or you decreased same thing, do it in the body of the work and you decrease until you now have the correct or the appropriate number of stitches. You can then, because you'll still have that little concave or you'll still have that little wave on the end of your project, you could then use a border to mask, <laughs> you know, not mask, that sounds so negative, but to cover up or to embellish you, you, you making the project a unique project. That's what we'll call it, okay? You can use a border. When I use a border to try to uh, embellish on my imperfections, I will typically do something like a single crochet first around the entire piece and try my best to have the same number of stitches on both sides so that it, it doesn't have to necessarily be perfect, but you want to perfectly space out those stitches so that when you do the border that your border will lay flat and that it will help to to mask or to um, hide those places of the waviness or those those imperfections in the side of your piece and you can do that you know it can be something just as easy as doing a single crochet around once then doing double crochet around again and then maybe doing a, um, a petticoat I always say that one wrong with the P-I-C-O-T I just always put a whole bunch of stitches in one stitch and do a smaller one on each end, skip one or slip stitch and keep going. Just something just so that you will repeat and make it lay flat and make it pretty. Um, let's see if there was anything else. Another thing um, that you can't overlook, and this is regardless of what you're doing, is learn how to read your work, how to, how to look at your work eyeball when 
be able to eyeball when something has gone wrong and you can even usually see where your issue took place just by laying out your work and just really looking at it. Um, what I find fascinating is if you ever look at some of the history of yarn craft, knitting, crocheting, if you ever look at any of it, imperfections in their work was a, the way that you could identify and distinguish between two crafters work. So that was a way of like their signature of having the same missing stitch or the same something in a project. So don't, I don't frog every project that I see something wrong with. I just don't. I see that it's time and usually if, unless the person is a crafter, they wouldn't know anyway. They wouldn't know. Now, if it's something really major, of course I would. But that's not a habit for me. That's how I learn, and that's how I make adjustments, and that's how I can take those skills into making my own patterns and making items that fit for me. And a lot of times it comes from a mistake that just worked out in my favor. So I wanted to say that as encouragement. Um... Another thing is the last, I guess this will be the last tip is that um, if you're using a natural fiber, that's where blocking can also be your friend. Uh, oh, you hear about a lot of blocking when it comes to knitting, but you can do blocking with crochet too. And what blocking can do if you're using a natural fiber, I mean, you can do it with acrylic, but it won't hold as well. But what you could do is you can either steam it or you can wash in and stretch and place it out and block to help work out some of those imperfections as well. And so blocking can help you with it. Um, but my go-to is fix the stitches at a border. That usually works with just about everything, even if it's a garment. Um, I don't do, you know, you all know I don't do a lot of apparel knitting. I just don't. Now I'll do shawls and um, little things like that. I got my summer vest that I like to do, but I don't do a lot of those things. Um, but for the most part, that is how you can make those adjustments. So, that is it. Oh, mm, no, that wasn't the last tip. Sorry. This is, this is it too. Um, be mindful in crochet how you handle your first and your last stitches on your project. It doesn't matter if you're new, it doesn't matter if you're seasoned, be mindful of it because in the beginning and the end is where you can tend to lose a stitch or you can gain a stitch. Um, for example, in some projects your chain is counted as your first stitch. If your chain is counted as your first stitch then you need to be mindful of where you place your second stitch. Another thing is when you get to the end of the row and you, people usually need to put one last stitch at the top of the chain from the stitch from the row before, but they don't see that direct um, opening that is made from the crochet stitch and so they just chain up and they keep going. And that means every row then, in essence, they're losing a stitch. So it's not in the body of it, but it's on the outside of it. And even if it was on the outside in that manner, I would slowly every other row uh, either increase a stitch or two just to get back to where I need to be. Um, but that's again where those stitch markers will help because you'll see that on those ends, it's getting smaller and smaller versus the inside is remaining the same. So that was another tip. I believe that is absolutely all. Let me know if you have any questions about that, um, if you have any other crafting questions that you think that I can be helpful with. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. But as always, I look forward to being helpful, especially when it comes to the Yarn Crafters Chat videos. Um, before I get ready to say bye, I want to tell you all about something that is so random. Um, it's, not about, <laughs> it's not about knitting or crocheting, but um, this past couple, two weekends ago, I went to a conference with my sister and uh, we we went and we actually stayed in town and um, it was the Women of Faith Conference which was my very first time going to that conference. They did Unwrap the Bible at, um, at Lakewood Church in Houston. 
is it Lakewood? Yes, it is Lakewood in Houston. And so we went and had a fantastic time. Um, I, I wanted to tell you all this because as we're there, in between the sessions, I'm sitting and I'm knitting and I'm having a good time and I'm talking and socializing with the women that were around me because my sister and I did not have seats together. And it's so amazing as you're doing yarn work or whatever, other people around you that do it or they like to do it or their moms used to do it. And you hear all of these stories and people just share. And I'm just sitting there and I'm knitting and I'm just enjoying myself. And so, um, you know, in all of that, you know, um, as I was there, it's like this, there was a sisterhood um, as we were there to learn more about the Bible and to share and interact with each other. But I, I realized that that's somewhat the same thing that happens in this crafting thing, you know. So I, I tell you all this because, um, you know, I really encourage you, whether it's to interact in the comment section or to interact in groups on Facebook, which I don't do a lot of, but they're there. Um, to go to your local yarn shop and visit and interact with people or just find a couple of crafting buddies. It just makes the the action of it, the craft of it that much more fun to share and to extend and it causes you to, to increase and to grow and it causes you to up your game a little bit um, because you're challenged and you see people doing other things and you'd like to do those things too. So, with all of that said, I hope that you all are having a fantastic week. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't forget to leave them in the comment section. Do not forget that this video is being recorded on March 6, 2014. And this month, on my blog at EssenceOfMe.com, click on blog. I am going to be blogging a bit more because this is the National Craft Month. And so I did an extra post uh, yesterday, or Tuesday, Tuesday, showing my beginning of my first sweater. Yay! So I'm not going to show it in here yet. I'm going to do it on my blog. And I'm literally taking you through the steps of me making this sweater with pictures and my yarn choices and my thought process. And it's not super long. And I think it's entertaining. And if it's not, it was for me. <laughs> so so visit and if you haven't already subscribed to both my blog as well as my channel I appreciate you all thank you for watching thank you for listening and um, I will see you all on the next yarn crafters chat where I will be showing some items that I got in the mail and um, oh I didn't even see this is what happened I forget stuff. I forget stuff. Okay, I gotta show you one more thing. I know. So random. I did the clothes. <sighs> this is why I need notes. Just a second. I wanted to show y'all this. <laughs> I guess we sandwiched it all with a book. So, <laughs> I said I'm a book lover with yarn. Two books that I went, I, I purchased this past month. And the first is the Principles of Knitting, and it's by June Hemis Hyatt. It says Methods and Techniques of Hand Knitting. And I bought this at my favorite place to shop for craft books, which is Half Price Books, even though my Half Price Books is slipping. Yes. I got a coupon from them for, I believe it was 40% off or 50% off. Um, and so I went. This book is usually $45. The price on it was $19.99 and I got it for 40% off. And this book is fantastic. It is fantastic. Now, the only thing that I don't like about this book so far, because I have been reading it already and using it, is I don't like that the pictures are not color. I'll show you. Um, what I don't like also is that some of the terminology, if you if you knit or I think crochet is better than knit in this sense usually with crochet the terms that you hear are the terms that you hear except for the um, international differences of how to execute like a treble versus a triple whatever treble stitch whatever um, but in this book 
she did a good job at the beginning of the book introducing the fact that she was she was going to try to pick one term so that it wouldn't be confusing throughout the book but if you were to just pick up this book since it's not meant to be read from front to back and you would come across a word like you normally would see right side wrong side and she uses something else to describe it it's kind of confusing but um, I like the fact that they use, she has, she has very, uh, quite a few cast-ons, quite a few bind-offs, um, different seeming techniques, and this is one of those books that it would be just a great base, because it is comprehensive, it's detailed instructions, it is a lot more words than there are pictures, but it's a great reference book, the table of contents text is good, as well as the index is great. And so those things always make for a great reference book. So, the pr principles of knitting. The other book that I purchased is Knit to Flatter. It is the only instructions you'll ever need to knit sweaters that make you look good and feel great by Amy Herzog. Now, I bought this book it was on sale, not a half price books, but it was on sale. It was 40% off when I bought it. And as you see, I've already started reading it and I've tabbed it up. Um, I bought this book because I will be coming to you all soon with a review for the Sweater 101, which is the book that I'm using in order to document making my first sweater on my blog now. I wanted to get this book because if you are a subscriber or you purchase classes on Craftsy, then they have a sweater class on there. I can't think of the name of it. It I can't think of it. But it's done by this author. And I received a discount. I think it was from um Lion Brand. I'm on Lion Brand's email list and they sent a sponsored email to me for the class and I got the class at a discount. I think it was like a 40 or 50 percent off um, if I purchased it through their link in the in their um, email. And so I did. I bought the course. Went through the course. I'm almost through it. I just listen to it whenever I don't want to listen to a book while I'm knitting. And it has been great. And some of the techniques that she identified were great. But in that type of a platform, I like to be able to read it or have pictures as a takeaway. And you can correspond with the instructor there. And so that's when she told, she, I asked and she answered that all of the things that she was talking about was available in the book. It's just the class is more of a visual for visual learners. And you can put the two of them together nicely. And so that's why I purchased this book, which is Knit to Flatter. I will come back and tell you more about this book when I finish both the course as well as this book. Um, this won't be as soon as the other one because the other one is great. But this one has been awesome because I wanted to um, have some really good base, basic patterns um, in order to do, um, look at for alterations. And I'll show you a couple before I go. This is a really long video. Oh, well, like this is nice. And there's this hoodie. Oh, this is really pretty. And what I like about the, oh, this is what I really like. I really like this. This is so me. Um, what I really like about the course that I haven't seen anywhere else in any other medium, and I haven't taken classes everywhere, of course, is that she put in the course, in the class as well, I don't know if she does it in here because I haven't got to that part yet. She places the sweaters on different body types and shows how you choosing different things in a sweater type will make your figure look different. And so she'll put that same exact sweater on two different body types and you can visually see immediately the differences in how certain sweater shapes will hide like your midsection or if you are, um, if you are 
bottom heavy and if your sweater cuts off at this you know x y and z and how you can alter di uh, different sweater patterns to meet with those um, design tips for your body I guess that's what you say like the sleeve length and how sleeve length works if you're a short person versus a long person and not just in your sleeves are too long or your sleeves are too short but how having a sleeve at a certain point can make your torso look a bit longer when you have a short torso or something like that I guess yes. so um, I gotta go this is way too long so those are my books <laughs> and that is it for um, the Yarn Crafters Chat Book Lover with Yarn. Uh, thank you for your attention. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Please let me know what you thought about the book review and if you've read the book before and if you'd be interested in um, future book reviews. Also, I would love to know what are you working on? And most importantly, because this was about books, what are you reading? Do you consider audiobooks reading? I mean, I do, but would you say, oh, I'm reading this, or would you say, I'm listening to this? I'm out of here. As always, have a fantastic day and a great week, and I look forward to talking with you all hopefully sooner than later. Take care and goodbye. <music>